Okay, we're going to take a look at the uh, fighting, uh, some of the weapons, the new technology, um, and the trenches of World War I. Okay, so World War I, unlike other wars, um, it's a multi-front war. So you have the Central Powers in the middle here, and you see they're fighting on both uh, the Eastern Front and the Western Front. So they're really kind of multiple wars going on at the same time. Um, you see who has the advantage, you know, the, the Allied Powers on the outside. Um, are going to have a strategic advantage because, you know, they're, they're really, um, Germany and Austria-Hungary are kind of stuck, again, fighting both sides, okay? And the fighting is going to be very different uh, depending on which front or where the place uh, the fighting is going on, okay? So uh, the Western Front um, is located along the, the French and German border, okay? So the Western Front mostly we're looking at is where the trench warfare um, is happening. Now trenches, um, these are going to be dug in the ground. I'll show you a uh, uh, picture here. Okay. Um, what, we're, uh, what we're looking at with these trenches is they would dig these, um, you know, about eight feet deep trenches dug into the ground um, for mi hundreds of miles. Okay, hundreds of miles connecting. Um, now you see how they're set up is um, they would zigzag. Okay, you would have one line of trenches, you know, going this on this side. You have another line over here, and then in between is uh, is no man's land. Okay, so because the both sides are really dug in the ground, literally, there's not going to be much progress going on because the only way you can take the land um, is to go and charge the other person's trench. Okay, um, we're not going to have modern uh, war tactics like uh, airplane and dropping bombs yet. Uh, we'll see some of that uh, a little bit, but because of this new style of fighting, um, neither side makes, makes much progress at all. Okay. So um, these men are going over the top. You can see that's their trenches, so they would charge out of the trenches, run through no man's land, and try to attack the enemy's uh, fortifications, their, their trenches. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Okay. Now, um, you can see here, there's a man right here in the trench, um, no man's land in the middle, okay? The trenches here just dug out for hundreds of miles, okay? <clears throat> now, these trenches is not the best place to uh, hang out. Um, lots of problems, lots of uh, disease. Um, you think about, it's not like modern warfare. You go and you fight, and then you have your bunker, and then you have your, you know, you live, sleep, fight, go to the bathroom, throw up, get sick, all in these trenches. This is where you live. Um, the amount of people that die from disease is just astronomical. I mean, so many people dying from disease because these are just bacteria-filled, just cesspools, okay? The rodents, there's lots of stories of these badger-sized rodents, um, you know, because what would happen is they'd have to have all the, the dead bodies piled up, you know, until they'd have, you know, their weekly... Uh, uh, kind of uh, crew come in and clean them out, and they would just be hundreds and thousands of rats all over these bodies. Um, bad weather, again, France is not that different than Wisconsin, so you have uh, snow and rain, and it's just nasty. Now, <clears throat> one of the kind of most famous um, problems with these trenches, now, if you've ever went swimming and your hands get kind of wrinkly, okay, um, or in a bathtub. Now, if you've ever stayed in there long enough, you can actually kind of peel your skin off. Um, and I, I know I've done this before. But what happens is these guys are living in these trenches, um, and during the rainy season, you're standing in, you know, six inches of water all the time. Um, and what people start to get is trench foot. Um, you can see the bone here. I mean, it gets to the point that the infection, um, this is all just bacteria, um, you know, spreading uh, on their foot, their feet, you know, cut off the circulation, blood blisters, the bones of the heels sticking out. I mean, just nasty stuff. Um, again, thousands of people getting this. So you got to amputate your feet. Um, it's a nasty, dirty fighting environment, World War I. Okay. Now, on the eastern front, so that's on the western front um, in France. Um, on the eastern front, this is where Austria-Hungary um, and Germany um, – are fighting against the, the Russians. This is more mobile, your, nor, your kind of uh, typical fighting that you would think of, okay? So we have the Eastern Front in Russia and the Western Front in France, 
Okay, West France, East Russia. <laughs> Put it in your head. All right. Now the technology. Um, this is kind of cool. I mean, this is the first modern war um, because of the tanks, the planes, the subs, the machine guns. Um, and the machine gun's really the big one. That, that's really going to change. It's a game changer. Okay, before. You know, you have bolt action rifles. You can shoot off, you know, what, 10 rounds a minute if you're quick. Um, now you're looking at the machine gun, hold it down, you know, 500 bullets uh, a, a minute, okay? Um, now these aren't modern, you know, AK-47s, you know, you got Rambo running around, eh, killing everybody. Um, you'd have to have three people to station one of these. You'd have to have the, the operator, um, someone that's making sure that the, the bullets are fed, um, You'd have to have uh, someone work in the coolant system because what happens is the barrel spins around so quickly that it gets very hot. So you'd have to have a barrel, a water barrel over the top to, to cool it off. Um, but this is just going to be devastating. I mean, the number of people killed, um, you know, the British Army, um, when they start the war, needs to be completely redrafted after six months because their entire Navy or their entire Army is dead because of the machine gun, okay? Um, you're going to see poison gas um, with mustard gas, with chlorine gas, um, you know, making you choke to death, literally. Um, some of them get on your skin, get blood blisters. Uh, pretty, pretty nasty, uh, nasty stuff. Okay. Now uh, um, you see even uh, even Fido having the gas mask. Okay. <coughs> Tanks for the first time. Now these are pretty unreliable. Uh, but they're more for um, kind of the holy crap, there's a huge armored tank coming at me uh, effect. Um, because, I mean, they're not, again, they don't go very fast, you know, four or five miles an hour, break down often. But, again, to be able to approach the enemy in one of these is, uh, is pretty, pretty scary. Okay. Um, see one's here. French tank. Uh, again breaks down in the middle of no man's land, you're kind of screwed, okay? <clears throat> Planes are going to be used for the first time here in, uh, in, in mostly starting out for spying. Um, later, they'll uh, attach some guns on them and, um, you know, but it's still, it's not the modern, you know, F-16 that we're, we're, we're thinking about, okay? Zeppelins are going to be used, um, and these are just giant blimps. Mostly used by the Germans for, for spying purposes. Now, <clears throat> the problem with one of these is that it is a huge balloon of hydrogen. Okay? Now, hydrogen is extremely flammable. So, if you see one of these puppies uh, flying over top your trench, okay, and they're trying to get surveillance spy footage, well, shoot it down. And it's a, <laughs> it's a huge, I mean, uh, you know, like a hydrogen bomb uh, blowing up here in the middle of the sky, okay. Um, we're going to see heavy artillery, okay, Big Bertha uh, can fire these, uh, you know, these shells that are, you know, a couple tons, nine miles away, um, you know, from here to Clinton, okay. So now we're seeing, again, with all this modern stuff, I mean, this is all new for this, this war, and the devastation and the death toll is going to be crazy compared to other wars, okay. There's another uh, big Bertha. See the, uh, the people here setting it up. It's got to go on. It's got wheels, but you got to go again on, on tracks. Okay, poison gas with the machine guns, um, flamethrowers for the first time. Okay, again, not too good if you get shot in the back. Um, grenade launchers. Now the significance of all this: more people dying much faster. Okay. Soldiers, you got, you know, 17, 18, 19-year-old guys don't, I mean, you give these guys these machine guns, they don't really realize the devastating effects of these crazy weapons, okay? Um, and more soldiers are going to be needed in a very short amount of time. Like I said, you know, the British Army completely redrafted in six months, okay? Because so many soldiers die uh, so quickly, all right? So, uh, this as far as, I mean, all this stuff, you don't need to know all the details of all this, the machine gun being the biggest impact on, on this. Um, and we'll look at this uh, tomorrow in class. And I uh, hope you have a good day. See you guys.